I'm Yang Jianli, and I'm grateful for your time. I would like to start my presentation with a video seen all across China. The Chinese Communist Party propaganda video you have just seen was distributed on February 22nd, when the coronavirus was killing thousands of people every day in China. The people of Wuhan were still in lockdown, yet the video pretends that Wuhan residents were fine and thankful to the government, which was doing everything possible to save them. The Chinese Vice Premier Sun Chunlan made an inspection trip to a Wuhan residential complex on March 5th. Here is a video showing her walking through the grounds of the complex. Please watch it once more. And more carefully. Here you are. The man was played by a cop. Here is another video of the same scene captured by real residents. Sun Chunlan's inspection was to test the waters and prepare for the later visit of the Chinese dictator Xi Jinping. After Sun Chunlan left, Wuhan party chief Wang Zhonglin suggested citizens to undergo gratitude education to properly thank the party and Xi Jinping for saving them in the epidemic, so that Xi Jinping's later visit could appear more triumphant. Here is the propaganda video of his visit. You can see images of Xi Jinping as a great and a conquering leader to whom the people should be thankful. To ensure everything was real this time, each family in the area where Xi Jinping walked through had two security officers sitting in their homes while Xi Jinping was walking down there, so that nobody would dare express their anger and frustration or point out that everything is faked. Xi Jinping's regime does not want Wuhan residents to tell you how much they have been suffering and how the disaster befell on them. While Xi Jinping was staging his visit, endless Wuhan residents pleaded for help online, saying hospitals were overflowing and their family members were turned away and left to die at home. Nobody knows how many people died before managing to get to hospitals and how many people died without their loved ones around. During that time, photos circulated on the internet showing people lying in the street in Wuhan, dead or fainted. And numerous photos also displayed that those who violated quarantine orders or showed symptoms were either forcefully removed by local police from homes 
or forcibly imprisoned inside their homes. Those who did not wear masks in public were shamed publicly and beaten up. There are obvious clues that the Chinese government is concealing the extent of virus outbreak and its casualty in China. On March 23rd, the government authorized the family members to collect the ashes of the dead in Wuhan for 12 days, during which 35 urns were handed out each day. Totally, that's a 42,000 death. The number is in a shocking discrepancy with the official Wuhan tally, that is 2,524. More than 15 times more people die than officially admitted. The evidence reveals a level of negligence that is criminal. My organization, Citizen Power Initiatives for China, spent weeks creating a detailed timeline of events. It can be reviewed and analyzed at wuhanmemo.com. The first recorded case in Wuhan was November 17, 2019. The authorities waited more than two months to shut down the city on January 23, 2020. In December, several Chinese laboratories identified a mystery infectious virus. On January 1st, the authorities demanded the destruction of the lab samples and the stop of the testing for the virus. Despite multiple cases of transmission, they denied human-to-human -human transmission until three weeks later. On December 31st, the eye doctor Li Wenliang and seven other doctors, all from Wuhan Central Hospital, started blowing the whistle. They were quickly reprimanded by the authorities for propagating rumors. The state-controlled media doubled down by publicly humiliating them, claiming the doctors were stirring up trouble and deserved punishment. Dr. Li Wenliang died of the virus on February 7th. The second whistleblower, Dr. Mei Zhongming, died of the virus on March 1st. We have been unable to determine the fate of the other six whistleblowers. It is undeniable that the Chinese government prioritized covering the virus instead of addressing it immediately. Its dangerous and selfish behavior has led the controllable outbreak to become a global pandemic, killing hundreds of thousands and plunging the entire world into a total catastrophe. This public health crisis has exposed Xi Jinping's totalitarian politics. Since he took power in 2012, Xi Jinping has struck fear into intellectuals, journalists, and private business people. The message is clear and simple, loyal, or face punishment. Censorship used to be fragmented across the government agencies with cracks that nimble journalists and netizens could exploit to circulate information. Now, the space for free speech and civil society has been squeezed almost to zero, turning back to the time of the culture, cultural revolution. Inside the party, officials are told to be absolutely loyal to Xi Jinping and never question his policies. This keeps the government official in line and at the same time cripples their ability to govern. There are no incentives to blow the whistle on anything that is wrong. This creates the perfect storm for a pandemic. As a result, when the coronavirus broke out, no one in the government would dare suggest against Xi Jinping's will that he must act immediately and urgently. A state-run journal revealed that Xi Jinping knew about the epidemic on January 7th. And on that day, at the Politburo meeting, Xi Jinping gave a comprehensive order for the government's response. We don't know exactly what the order was, but from the government's actions in the next two weeks, we can deduce that at the core of the order was an extensive cover-up for the sake of stability. Otherwise, 
given its power in China, these government actions would be unthinkable. During that time, for example, in Wuhan, both the city government and the provincial government convened 1,200 people meetings. The local government then organized a 40,000 family banquet to celebrate the Chinese New Year. More outrageously, on January 23rd, the day when the Wuhan lockdown was declared, the People's Daily newspaper did not mention the lockdown, but instead headlined the news that Xi Jinping hosted a grand new, new year party at which he did not mention a word about Wuhan or the virus outbreak. The death of Li Wenliang unleashed people's anger toward the regime. The voice for free speech is strong and eager. Many heroes have since emerged to challenge the regime. I will introduce but a few of them here. Xu Jiangren, a Tsinghua University professor, was put under a house arrest after posting online an article entitled The Angry People Are No Longer Afraid, in which he declared that the coronavirus has exposed the bankruptcy of the China's rulers and that democracy is the only way out. Xu Jiun, a major leader of China's citizen movement, was arrested after calling for Xi Jinping to step down. Chen Qiu Shi is a lawyer and a citizen journalist who has covered the 2019 Hong Kong protests. He disappeared after documenting and reporting the true situation in Wuhan. Ai Fen, the head of emergency at Wuhan Central Hospital, went public saying authorities had stopped her and her colleagues from warning the world about the virus outbreak. She has disappeared. Ren Zhiqiang, a property tycoon, wrote that Xi Jinping is a power-hungry clown and that his strict limits on free speech had exacerbated the epidemic. He is detained along with his assistant and his son. The Chinese Communist regime and its leader, Xi Jinping, are not saviors in this pandemic. They are the culprits. They put power and control above human lives. China has for years claimed to be a responsible member of the global community. But with this pandemic, it has revealed its true colors. It can no longer be denied that Xi Jinping's regime is a danger to the world. The leaders of democratic countries must hold the Chinese state accountable for this global pandemic and its economic consequences. If they don't, then we, the civil society, must push them to do so. Do not let Xi Jinping's regime get away with what it has done to you and your loved ones. Do not let the Chinese dictatorship control the Wuhan virus narrative to its advantage. We must not let the culprit play the savior. I also ask you for solidarity with the people in China suffering under Xi Jinping's dictatorship. I started off with a propaganda video. I would like to end with a two-minute talk by a resident of Wuhan, who perfectly illustrates what Professor Xu Zhangren said, the angry people are no longer afraid. Let's hear the people sing. Wuhan这个事情，武汉这个瘟疫，都是有计谋、有计划发出来这个瘟疫。牺牲的是我们平民老百姓。我的家人、我的父母、在家等死，没有人关心我们平民老百姓的性命。有钱也买不到药，有
，法律是他们判的，他们能说判几多年就能判几多年，律师都没有用的，有一个正义的律师都会关起来，他不会为正身而说话，因为他们有邪恶的政权压迫下，不能正正正的说话。我要告诉你们，一个人牺牲。两个人牺牲，革命肯定是有血有肉来牺牲。我想站出来，我暴露出来，我就要站出来，我就要牺牲，为我的父母，为我的家人，为我以后的后代，可以自由的生活。我发生，我也很危险，我也知道，但是我已经受不了了，受不了了，没有病床。没有医药 ，CCTV 讲的那个新闻全部都是假的，全部。他们的吼声，他们的叫声，我看到了。我要发声，我要为我自己发声，我要为我武汉的人民发声，我要为中国同胞发声。就是有养老金，他们想把这个养老金废掉，搞这些事情。这种邪恶的政权，我真的不想再出，真的不想再沉默了。我要发声了，我要疯了。没有一个人可以站出来，我现在站出来了，一定要反抗，一定要反抗啊！同胞们，不能再让他们宰割妻呀！不能再可以这样了，为了下一代站起来，真的是站起来呀、啊、！Thank you, Dr. Yang Jianli, for your powerful presentation, highlighting how the Chinese Communist Party's incompetence and state censorship really served as the catalyst of this global pandemic. My name is Jenny Wang from the Human Rights Foundation, and I will be moderating this Q and A panel discussion here with you all today. We have about ten minutes on the clock, so let's get started. Okay, first question from Simone: Did the Chinese virus get to other places in China, such as Beijing, or was it only in the Hubei province? Thank you, Jenny.、Uh, that's a very good question. The Wuhan Virus outbreak actually has gone to everywhere in China, not res only restricted to Hubei, Hubei province. It has gone to Beijing, Canton, Shanghai, and everywhere in China. Thank you.、Uh, next question from Felix: What is a concrete measure that we can do to increase awareness of the CCP's responsibility? I think this conference like this will、uh, do a wonderful job to let more and more people in the world to know what Xi Jinping's regime did in the first month, two months of the Wuhan virus outbreak,、um, to know the regime's careless, dangerous, selfish, and brutal behavior in handling this virus. That actually has. Resulting in the global crisis we are experiencing now. So、mm -hmm. this conference, and we have a social media, and、mm -hmm. we can use the social media. And、uh, if you could, you would, I would、uh, suggest you to write articles about it and do good research on it, and、uh, put together this kind of、uh, virtual conference to let more and more people to get to know the facts.、Mm -hmm. Great ideas. Um, Amanda has a question. Are there any updates on what has happened to the disappeared?、Uh, we have been unable to determine the fate of、uh, so many people who have emerged to challenge the regime、uh, ever since the Wuhan virus、uh, broke out, and we don't know where about of Xu Jiangren. We know、uh, we don't know the whereabouts of、um, Xu Jiang,、uh, Chen Qiushi, Fang Bing,、uh, Li Zihua. These are we call citizen journalists who、um, documenting and who have been documenting and reporting about the true situation in China. And we don't know where everything is. 
she is a doctor. She went to public uh, uh, telling the truth. Now she disappeared. And Ren Zhiqiang, we know, is, in de uh, is detained, but we don't know where he's detained. And so many cases like that are happening in China. Um, at the end of your presentation, you showed us a very, very strong video of a woman begging the audience and the viewers uh, to understand what's going on in China. Nicolina yes. has a question. She wants to know, will this woman in the video survive after showing what's going on worldwide? Um, yes, uh, we all concern about her safety. But unfortunately, again, we have uh, no information whatsoever where she is and how she's doing. And you know, the, um, uh, the Chinese Communist Party regime uh, has not changed the behavior from the lesson of uh, Dr. Li Wenliang. Instead, he doubled down on controlling the information, you know, on censoring. Censor. So mm -hmm. it's very difficult to find where these people are. And we really um, um, concerned about their safety. And mm -hmm. what we can do here is to enlarge their voices. You know, yes. I call uh, you know the um, people's um, voice out of anger and frustration as a turning point where the fury overcame the fear. Just like uh, what Professor Xu Zhangming said, the angry people are no longer afraid. I predict more and more people will come out to speak out. But we in the international community must show our solidarity with them to come up with a concerted effort to support them. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Regina has a question. Why would they hide the virus instead of treating it? What benefits would they have of doing that? I am. Um, I'm. I have to say. I, I, I'm sorry, but some of you have been uh, concerned about Yang Zhan Li, and if you. Uh, tuned in to the session before the Q&A with Ai Weiwei, you noticed that at the, toward the end of the session, Jenny was unable to finish asking him a couple of I questions. Am, I, I'm, I, I had to and, say, um, I'm sorry, but I, some of you. I, um, I just spoke with Yang John Li, and I'm gonna get him on the telephone because his uh, computer has been attacked. So, let's see. Hello. Hi, Jean Lee. Um, I, I I have you on um, on my FaceTime, and I I wanted to have everyone uh, interact with you with regard to what has just happened at the end of your very powerful presentation at CovidCon uh, about the situation inside China. So uh, could you could you fill us in? And, and if if people can't hear, I'll, I'll repeat what you just said. Okay. So, but at it, toward the end of the question answer session, um, I was attacked. My computer crashed. That would be look would be like if you uh, want to speak out in China. They always try to shut you up. I'm here in the United States. I'm safe, but they still try to do everything possible to shut me up. But I will tell you, I will not shut up. I will continue to speak out as what Dr. Ivan said when he, when she was interviewed by a people magazine in China, she said, uh, if I had knew so many people die, would die, I would not shut up myself. I will continue to speak out. I will speak out as much as I can. So that's my mentality. Now I will speak out as much as I can. Now, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a little shocking, you know, we're, we're having our conference, we're sitting in the United States, you're in Washington, DC, um, people are piping in and we, we weren't expecting that one of our speakers would essentially have his computer attacked during this event. 
Uh, can, can you tell us exactly what happened physically? And, and hopefully we can hook you up with some folks, maybe from Citizen Lab or somewhere else to figure out how this attack happened and, and, and maybe uh, protect you and, and figure out a way of uh, helping you recover the data on that computer. Yep, I, uh, I was trying to answer the fourth question put forth by Jenny, and all of a sudden the screen just went out. And then I tried to turn it on, and I tried, tried, and I have been trying ever since, but I have not been able to turn it on. So I'm not a technical person. I don't know what happened, but everybody understand uh, the behavior, the uh, mindset of the Chinese Communist Party regime. They want to shut up everybody. So they happened. This kind of thing happened to me many times in the past. When, for example, we put together a conference for memor uh, memorizing um, uh, Tiananmen Square massacre, and they have they would happen, and it happened many times in the past. So I'm not surprised. Well, I, I think I should tell some of uh, the, the people who are joining us that you actually were one of the original Tiananmen Square protesters and that you spent years in prison in China as a result of um, simply asking for democracy in China. And uh, I, I, um, I salute you for this. I salute you for continuing uh, the struggle, not only after prison, but after prison, you, you decided to um, continue this. Your organization is Citizen Power Initiatives, and you've created a website called Wu the, the Wuhan Memo. Is, is that what it's called? Yeah, WuhanMemo.com. It's a detailed timeline of the events. If you study the uh, timeline, you will see very clearly who is responsible for this global pandemic. Well, Jean-Li, thank you. I, I wanted to make sure that the people who joined us uh, had a chance to, uh, in many ways, figure out what happened, because some people were, were rather concerned what, what happened to Dr. Jean-Li, what, what, what's, what's going on? He just disappeared. And uh, I, I guess we were all living through some of the technical diffi difficulties of working from home and some of the issues having to do with quarantine and, and broadband and issues like this. But uh, certainly, we never expected that your computer would stop functioning and does not work any longer. So uh, again, I salute you. Um, thank you very much. Thank you for your leadership. Everybody stay safe, healthy, and hopeful. Thank you.